Hello and welcome to the second video in my Vortigaunt 2 build. If you've already watched the first one, then brilliant. If you haven't, links down below to the entire playlist so you can see what I'm up to. Now, the Vortigaunt, as I'm recording this, this is about one week after I did that first video, looks like this. Uh, the only thing that's missing is the servos and the linkages. And in this video, what I want to do is go through and show you how to put the foam together. Now, this is an updated version of a model that was actually designed by a gentleman called Ewan. Uh, and this is Greg's kind of version of it. Again, very quickly, the central body is the same as things like the Black Hawk now. So that's exactly uh, the same, consistent with the other models. Uh, the big difference is there's no kind of uh, side pods and obviously the wings are one piece and huge. And the big deal is they're actually held in place. Hopefully you can see that with two spars. So I can make these wings removable. Um, now these can be shipped around the world uh, and the way it kind of works with E-wings at the moment with Greg being so busy with his day job, because believe it or not, he doesn't design these things as his full-time job. This is just kind of a passion of his. Um, if you order them, then he cuts them for you. So uh, you just have to message him and be very nice and he'll make one. But this is a prototype. So caveat, before we get too far into this, uh, this is 99% expected to be the final release version. However, there may be a couple of slight tweaks. Now I have made mine for endurance. So I have made it uh, or I will finish making it so the wings are removable. Uh, that's going to help with transport. Um, the other thing I'm doing as well is the original Vortigaunt that uh, Ewan designed was really designed for something like a 520 4S battery in here and a 3D printed nose action camera and with that the central gravity is pretty easy to get. Central gravity is quite close to the leading edge here. It's only about 15 millimeters behind this point. However, some people fly as far back as 30. But I'm going to maiden it at about 15 to 18 millimeters. Uh, because of the way that I'm building this, I'm going to put in either a 4000 4S battery, which is about 399 grams, which is spookily exactly the same weight as my 7000 uh, milliamp hour lithium ion pack. So if I can get it flying with the LiPo, is the, is the plan, then we can switch over to the lithium ion and that will give me much longer flight times. Uh, now because of that I've created a little bit of a challenge for myself because I'm using a slightly lighter battery and I'm not using the 3D printed nose. As I've made this, this isn't the 3D printed nose, there is a version of the nose available for this particular HD unit, the HD unit light, the camera now available. Uh, I made this one because I want easy access to the USB port without cutting the foam at the side. Uh, so that also means that this is quite lightweight. So the combination of having a foam-based nose with the pieces cut out, a lighter battery means that I'm gonna to have to add about 110 grams of weight into the nose to get the central gravity in the right place. That means the flying weight, uh, I think, is gonna be just under 1.5 kilograms. Now that sounds heavy, but this has a massive wingspan. Uh, lovely lift, so I think that will be fine. So let me go and uh, go on to the slides and images that I've taken. Everything that I'm doing here is in the manual. I'm not deviating from the new manual in any way, really. Uh, but a couple of tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. So if you want to build yours, uh, you get to the end as easily and as smoothly as possible. A couple of top tips before we get too far into this. Use Gorilla Glue for the bonds. Uh, I found it really good with this particular foam. I've used lots of things like E6000 and stuff in the past. Gorilla Glue Clear seems to be the one to go for for this. Uh, make sure you have a new X-Acto knife and blade in your knife because you're going to need nice clean cuts and a little bit of sandpaper just to smooth things down and uh, remove any stray bits of foam. First thing we need to do is put the body together. Uh, there are two sides of the body that need to go with the side. Watch for the right way up. If you look at the rear, it's very clear which is the right way around. You want the side uh, matching the back of the body. Then use the glue on one side, put the two things together, pop it overnight with weights on top, and that's the first side attached. 
use the spars in a twisting motion to pop the holes in the side and then attach the other side in the same way. The extra step that I took here, I cut an auxiliary channel just before I put the other side on. That is there so that I can run uh, signal cables away from the power cables through the main firewall between the battery bay and the electronics bay. Wings are pretty straightforward as well. Uh, you need to get one of the reinforcing spars, cut it in half, and then cut a channel just behind the leading edge and just in front of the trailing edge. I did it about an inch, inch and a half, and cut it to about four millimeters, open that little trench with a popsicle stick. I always tend to keep the sticks from my ice lollies over summer, and then sand the spar, cover it in glue, and sink it into those slits that you've just created. Again, pop it on something level, put weights on top, and let that set up overnight. That will make sure the wing is nice and level and reinforced. Turn it over, cut another spar into about 540 millimeters, and cut a diagonal almost from one corner to the other. Again, don't cut too deep. The idea is just to create a channel to pop the spar in. Exactly the same thing, sand the spar, cover it in glue, pop it into position and then leave that to dry overnight as well. Motor mount is next, so what now the body is dry, offer up the motor mount to the rear of the model and just mark off where the four holes are going to be for the screws and also roughly where the shaft of the motor may impinge on the back of the model. Once that's done, use the X-Acto to cut out little recesses so that all those parts aren't going to be interfered with. Hold the nuts into position with the supplied screws and put a very, very small dab of CA into position. I would let that set up with the screws in position and then remove the screws. That should hopefully keep the CA from seeping around the corner and getting into your threads. If it does, and that's, this is one of the hardest parts, it can really bugger up the entire build. Once the CA has set and you are confident that the threads are not fouled, then cover the top and bottom of the rear of the main body with Gorilla Glue and push the motor mount into position and then I would mount it upright and just let everything set up again probably overnight is best. Next job to do then is to laminate the wings. See my lamination video for how to do this. Now this is a little bit more exciting because these wings are a lot larger so you have to take your time exactly the same process strip down the middle Put in the tiger stripes and just take your time. Laminate the top, make sure there's a double layer on the leading edge for strength. I also laminated the bottom of the main body just to help it survive any landings on anything but nice soft grass. And I also put a couple of strips in front of the main hatches just to allow the hatches to stick there nice and easily onto the foam. Once I've done that, I cover the wings in the car wrap material. Again, this is the carbon fiber effect stuff, exactly the same stuff that I used in my Black Hawk build. It can take a little bit more time. Again, the trick with this, I would say, is have a hairdryer handy or a hot air source. Uh, because this is the car wrap vinyl stuff, if you're struggling, getting it warm can make it a lot easier to get into position and also can shrink any, uh, any kind of little wrinkles that you accidentally get into it as you're putting it on. Once that's in place, then you can measure 30 millimeters from the inside edge and glue in the vertical stabilizers. Be aware there is a left and a right. The stabilizers are designed to canter outwards. So make sure you're putting them in the right place. Just mark off where the little snubs are on the bottom. Cut those with an X-Acto. And then again, use glue, put a weight on, and let them set up overnight as well. Elevons are cut out of the single piece of balsa that comes in the kit. It's very soft balsa, so you just mark it out as per the manual and then cut it with a metal straight edge and your exacto, a little bit of sanding. I sprayed them with plastic coat, let them set up overnight, sanded them smooth, and then again covered them in the vinyl. I've gone for the orange again, like I did with my other E Wings build. Attach the elevons to the rear of the model using the blend -erm tape method. So one piece of tape on the top and another piece of tape on the bottom to make that very flexible, resilient blend -erm hinge. 
So with the ailerons connected, last thing to do is to put the vertical stabilizers into position. Well, kind of vertical stabilizers, they're both on an angle. Now I covered mine again using the same orange vinyl, but the top tip I'll give you here is to remove the bottom three millimeters of the vinyl on each side. The recesses, the slots that are cut in the vertical stabilizer holders are actually just wide enough for the Corex without the vinyl on top. And that also means that the glue will stick a lot better too. So I fill the channel with glue and then push it home. I'd test fit it before you fill the channel with glue just to make sure it's gonna fit nicely. And then it's just a case of letting that glue set up. Now there are additional pieces that you can 3D print that will sit in front of the wings and provide a smoother transition between the wing and the body, but I'm not going to add them to mine here. So there you have it, that's how I've built mine. In the next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how to put the electronics in and we'll put the servos in and do the final buttoning up. Uh, it has been a fun build. There is a lot of room in here for everything. Uh, same dimensions, of course, as the Black Hawk. So loads of room for the battery bay and lots of room for electronics as well. So um, in fact, even more than normal because in here, I haven't had to put things like a receiver and video transmitter and stuff in because that's all taken care of uh, by this stuff down here. So join me in the next video. We'll put the electronics in and uh, get it ready to maiden. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.